Compañeros, welcome to the SQL Data Partners podcast, the podcast dedicated to SQL Server-related topics, which is designed to help you become familiar with what's out there, how you might use those features or ideas on how you might apply them in your environments. I am Carlos El Chacon. And I am Steve Stedman. We are two data professionals trying to help others get a better handle on their database environments, either through this podcast, our training, or our consulting practice. Thanks for joining us on the SQL Trail. Welcome to the show. SQL Data Partners. Compañeros, welcome to episode 109. It's good to be with you again. Yes, indeed it is. And this week's topic is not to certify. Yes, yeah, so as we get back in here to the studio, Steve and I chatting today, we kind of came up with this topic. We've talked a bit about certification in the past, but we thought we would explore this idea a little bit and kind of talk about some pros and cons of why you may or may not want to certify. Yeah, I think what's interesting with this is there's a lot of pros and a lot of cons and a lot of varying opinions out there, depending on who you talk to. Sure, sure. And maybe we're going to, you know, squash some of this conversation, but the reality is, is that you almost, you got to have them, right? I mean, I, I have, you know, I've passed certification exams. You've passed certification exams. Yep. You know, we might gripe the, about them a bit, but I maybe used the wrong phrase there earlier. Maybe not why you wouldn't certify, but maybe some of the challenges you'll face around certification. That's probably a better, yep. a, a yep. better model there because, you know, I, I don't think there's, there can be, there's too many people out there saying, oh, don't do that. Right. right? Right. But before we get into the details there, do we have any compañero shout outs to mention this week? Yes, we do have a couple of compañero shout outs. One coming from New York. So Alexander, oh gosh, Sharov, Sharov. <laughs> Sorry, Alexander. I apologize. I should have practiced that before we went on. But you know who you are. So Alexander's a longtime listener. Got after us a little bit or he, he, he reached out to us when we had that little pause. And encouraged us to get back on the air and uh, and to keep going. Yeah. And so we, we appreciate that. And that, that pause, by the way, was our summer vacation. It wasn't like us giving up on it or anything. Yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, we also had a <laughs> shout out from Aaron Hayes. And he just wanted to reach out and say that he appreciates our time for the podcast. And he always listens to it on his commute. And it keeps him up to date with some of the latest stuff in SQL Server. Yes. So... Thanks, Aaron. We appreciate Aaron. We appreciate that. And Alexander. Yeah, we all, we, we actually appreciate all, appreciate all those comments, right? Uh, you know, Steve and I were talking before we started here. You know, we we push this out into the internet. We you know we laugh and we joke and we have a good time with it. And then all we kind of see is download numbers. And so it's nice to get just a little comment, right? Even if it's that, right? We we hopefully you know, can sometimes engage in in longer conversations, but. Just to have people let us know that that, that they're listening, it's uh, we appreciate it. It's definitely good. We don't always know from those download numbers whether people are enjoying it or whether they just think we're crazy <laughs> or what. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, check out what Carlos and Steve said this way. You're never going to believe it. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, oh boy. <laughs> and, and we should note: so Aaron is actually going to join us at the Compañero Conference. Oh, speaking and of which, what's happening with that right. now? It is coming up, and compañeros, you have two weeks left to register. When this episode comes, seventh is our cutoff day for registration. Uh, just allow us to get you know to get ready, and uh, yeah. And so we we hope you see you there. If you haven't checked out the website compañeroconference.com, be down in Norfolk. If you're a regular listener to the podcast, I think we've we've gone through the idea. We have a great lineup of of speakers. We're going to be doing peer conferences. We're, we have structured and unstructured time. We're going to be going out on a cruise. And so we think we've put together something that's compelling, and we hope that you'll join us. All right. And this week, it's just you and I on the episode, Carlos. But next week, who do we have that will be joining us? So next week, I'm looking forward to Richard Campbell. So the Richard Campbell from the .NET Rocks podcast Probably you're familiar with them. Uh, he's been in lots of lots of different areas. You see him a lot on the Channel Nine stuff as well. They they are involved with the uh, the SQL Intersection or the Dev Intersection Conference, SQL Intersection or the Dev Intersection Conference, and so they're he's kind of all over the place. 
we had a user or a listener requested idea for building trust on Teams. And so I thought, hey, let's reach out to, you know, a non-DBA, a developer type, and kind of get their take. And I thought the conversation was fascinating. And I think that's an episode that we've already recorded, but it'll be coming out a week from now. And right. uh, I had a good time with that. It was interesting because he is probably the person on the on that was on the episode who has had more podcasting experience than anyone we've had on any episode. Oh, no question. And that I, because he's done, I think something like over 2000 podcast episodes. That's right. In fact, we claimed, we said that that this, that episode would be his 2000th episode. We claimed yeah. that number. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of podcasts. Yeah. So for this episode on certification, if you want to get to the show, notes, get to the show notes, the show notes for today's episode is sqldatapartners.com slash certification. Or sqldatapartners.com slash 109 for the episode number. Yeah. So I guess let's go ahead and jump into that conversation, right? So we have this idea of to certify or some challenges that you'll face in certification. So let's go ahead and start with the pros. Number one, certifications give you an opportunity to measure your skills. Yeah, it's it's interesting because looking at that, it's one of those that even just the preparing for it, you can go through and see these are the things that are the topics that may be included on the exam. And you can go through and figure out, okay, well, where am I strong and where am I weak? And what areas do I need to improve on? And it's sort of a good way there to, I don't know, build out your experience or build out your your knowledge so that you're a little bit more well-rounded on that specific certification. To get your hands on rounded on that specific certification. Yeah, that's right. I mean, certainly you're getting a broad exposure to all of the features and technologies that are in the database. And, um, you know, it, most of the time they get the, you know, they get sold in a book. You can take a peek there. And, and, and I think some of the prep tools are getting a bit better to, you know, to, to give you a better chance to get your hands on some of those things, you know, before, before kind of putting them in your own environment. Yep. And I think, an example of that for me was several years ago when I took the 70-461 exam and I went through the exam prep material ahead of time. The whole XML in the database was a piece that I hadn't done anything with at that point in time. But after doing the prep work, I realized, wow, there's a lot you can do there. Now, I've done a little bit with it since then, but it's not one of those things that I would have necessarily and I think this kind of goes back to this idea. And again, we've talked about a lot on this program is so the marriage of the technology and the business requirements. And that is as you begin to, to become more familiar with what the, what your business is looking for, the problems that they have, right? How can the technology help solve some of those problems? And, and, and I think as you're able to kind of combine those two, then you have a very successful, you have, you have a very interesting package there. And, and you can be, you know, very, very successful as you begin to connect those dots. Yes, indeed. So pro number two is getting your foot in the door. Right. So what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah. So I think uh, a lot of times, and I know this is the case for me, right? Particularly when you're new, having the certification, it allows you to be able to say, well, hey, I've passed an exam. I kind of know what I'm talking about, kind of know what I'm talking about, right? And so as you, as you look for, for employment, it, it just seems like particularly in the, you know, the, the DBA space, the data platform space, certifications are, are, are important to employers. Yep. And I think that it seems like that's an area that's important at the time that you're writing your resume or preparing <laughs> to jump to that next position in that it just having that those certifications listed on your resume may make you stand out as a little bit better than someone else who doesn't have those on their resume. Especially important when you're talking about career changes, right? So if this is in technology, so for example, you've been a developer and you want to come over to the data platform or networking, same same thing, systems, you know, system administration, or if you haven't been in technology and you want to come in, you know, certifications are that way to, again, if nothing else, just demonstrate the vocabulary, right, to be able to to speak the language. And I think an example of that, I worked with a guy who had been doing mostly 
like tech support type work. And, but he wanted to do more database things. So anytime there was a database project he could take on, he did it. But then he wanted to prove that he knew enough about databases to sort of jump out of that support role. So he went and did the 70-461 exam. Took him maybe a year of prep work to get ready for that from where he was at. And he eventually passed it and sort of proved that, yeah, he could, he could play in that area. Maybe even another point that we should make is, is confidence there. We, we didn't have that on our list. Maybe we should make that as, a, as another point is, is I think even I, I remember going back and talking with an episode 64 when we were talking with Patrick Thomas, who is, who is over the Microsoft Certified Professional Program at Microsoft. And that idea of, you know, we, we mentioned they're trying to give confidence to the technology workers and not only the workers, but also the employers. And so I think, again, you know, we'll, we're going we're gonna to circle back to this. And sometimes those goals or what they think of the, of the exams don't always line up. But it is important to, that both of them are, 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 are looking to them and, and again, want to gain that confidence. And then our last one, which we, which we kind of touched on a, a bit already, I think, is, is just exposure. You know, we, we mentioned getting into the new features, yeah. what, what's, what's there. I think particularly now as, as new things begin to come, you know, to come out, what's in the database that you're not using and could you take advantage of it? Yeah. And I think, you know, exams help do, it, do that really well. Right, right. And I think I kind of jumped the gun on that one under the measure your skills section with, with my story there on the XML. But yeah, I mean, it gives you exposure to more stuff that you may not have thought about trying in the past. Right. And so those were, those are our, Cons, or not, maybe not cons again, but challenges. We should change it to challenges. Right. And so as much as we talked about measuring your skills, our first challenge is that it doesn't really help you measure your skills. <laughs> right. And, and I think that that might be better phrased as it may not help you right. measure your skills. Because, I mean, the fact is, there's some confusion out there. And there's things people can do to get the certification without really knowing what they're doing. For instance... People can cheat by going out and finding some of the actual exam questions online. And right. I know after I took one of the exams, there was a question that I wanted to look into a little bit more. And I did some Googling on it. And I found out after I'd passed the exam that, wow, there's these exact exam questions that are published out there <laughs> that, that people can. And, and really, if you have a good memorization skill, you could go through all of those and memorize them. And not know any and memorize them and not know anything about the topic and pass the test. Sure. Now, I hope that doesn't happen very often, but I'm sure it happens occasionally. Right. Kind of along those same lines is the idea that we talked about employers wanting the certifications. So what the exam is going to give you exposure to and what your employer thinks the certification is going to give you exposure to maybe slightly different, right? They're, they're not always in harmony. Yep. Now I can think of an example there where I knew someone who was newer to SQL Server. They had been working with it for a couple of years and they went and passed the 70-461 exam. And after passing that, the employer's take on it was that they could now do everything, anything with SQL Server and that that person could do all the skills of someone <laughs> with like 20 years of experience. <laughs> and features that come with conversation with that person and we discover that, well, yeah, there's a lot of things that you do every day that aren't part of that 70-461 test. Right. Like everything that's covered in 462, for instance, all the DBA <laughs> skills. <laughs> yeah. And this is kind of one of the blessings and curses, you know, even when we think about SQL server, right? It's great for us because there are so many features that come with that. But then, you know, we, when we talk about SQL Server, we're lumping in, you know, SSIS, SSAS, I mean, you know, administration, performance. I mean, there are just so many, you know, tools in there. And then, you know, the, the, from an employer's perspective, they're like, oh, SQL Server certified. You should now understand all of these things. You're like, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can be a bit challenging. Yeah, and I think part of the key to that is really understanding what that certification has covered. Sure. And being able to re convey to re convey that in a way that whoever you need, whoever's looking at it, like your employer, understands what that means. Right. 
So another one that I added here, and that is with the new versions, there are just too many features, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the database now, I mean, can slice, it can dice, it can, you know, chop your onions and serve your, you know, veggies and all that other stuff as well. And you're like, and, and so it's interesting, I think. And again, we'll see how those certifications come out, but that, that four, uh, the 461, 462, 463 are still going back to 2012, 2014, right? You're, we, they haven't quite, in, you know, even though we're two versions removed from that, they haven't quite abandoned that. And, and I think it's, you know, it is going to be challenging just with, with the sheer number of features that we have. I don't know if certifications are going to change, right? Again, maybe we have a, again, maybe we have a, you know, new, new exams, smaller exams, pocket exams. I mean, you know, I'm not sure how that will come out, but I think there are just a lot of features to, you know, to, to, to know. And then trying to create a test that can cover all of that is, wow, just yep. a daunting task. And, you know, I think some of those features that they include in the test are almost like, features that the marketing team for SQL Server wants <laughs> to have covered so that people know how to use the latest and greatest rather than knowing how to use what they need to use to get their job done. Sure. And those can be very different on, on occasion. Or the ones like you mentioned, even the XML, right? That kind of keep continue to get, you know, in there every version. And you're like, yeah, really guys? Like <laughs> now having said that, I guess I, I should say full disclosure. I have actually participated in with an organization that reviews the tests. We go through and they I've done it so on, the, on the this other thing and which exams and then on the practice tests they offer the, the practice exams. And writing test questions is really hard. And so you have four people that at least four people on this call with a moderator going over a question and all the answers and we're debating back and forth and we're, you know, <laughs> looking at documentation and trying to make sure the wording is just right. And then you change something and you're like, oh, well, then that's going to affect this other thing. And what if they think this and how are they going to interpret that? And yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's very difficult. And, yeah. and I think sometimes we might uh, complain a little bit about, you know, how, how the, the exam questions are worded. But believe me, they're, they're spending a lot of time and energy to try to get those those questions just right. Oh, yeah, they certainly are. And I think that we oftentimes forget that when, we, when we're when we taking a test or when we're practicing sure. for a test. Right. Because I think as we get to later, you know, sometimes all that time and energy doesn't help us. Right. Right. It doesn't. <laughs> you know? yep. And that can, that, can, that can be frustrating. Yep. So another one of the cons that we have on the list is it's not the only way to show your skill in that there's a lot of other things that you may be able to do and maybe even be able to do with less of a time investment Sure, uh, to be able to show your skills. And there's, whether it's blogging or speaking or taking on a side project or working on an open source project or any of those kind of things might be just as valuable in showing that you know what you're doing versus taking a test. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, our pros was you know, that idea of getting the foot in the door, right? Having that on your resume, that's not the only thing that you could put on your resume to differentiate you. We're not seeing, I think we're going to continue to see it more, obviously in the, in the developer space. It's, it's, we're seeing it a bit more, but even like GitHub, right? So what's your GitHub handle, right? That is like I, we're seeing it a bit more, but even like GitHub, right? So what's your GitHub handle? Right. And allowing employers to go out there and look at the code you've checked in, you've participated in and whatnot. That is another way to increase your, your profile. And I think that you know, to our, to our advantage and having not that recent, not that it hasn't been too far in the past that I've actually had to work through recruiters and like try to find a job. And I mean, oh man, what a hassle that is. Like I, like I can almost, you know, <laughs> The, the back of my throat is like, you know, ha having this vile taste in it, remembering what that process was like. And and luckily, I think that's changing a little bit. And so it's more of extending your network and, and trying to, you know, connect with other people. That that will be the best and, and, and easiest way. Uh, maybe it's not easiest way to get a job, but obviously the, the most successful path. And yep. so all of these other things, like Steve mentioned, the blogging of the SQL Saturdays, allowing you to create that portfolio Certifications are, not, are no longer the only way to do that. Right. And I think that 
that may vary greatly with, with every employer too. I mean, I, I had a job interview. I remember several years ago where it's like, we don't, we don't want to see your resume. What we want to see is your, your GitHub profile. And, and that was it. That was all they wanted to look at as a starting point. And at that point in time, I hadn't really done anything publicly on GitHub, but I'd done lots of other public stuff, but I just completely struck out on that one. Sure. They didn't care about certifications, but then you go to another place and they do care about certifications. So right. certifications are not the only thing. You've got to be a little bit more well-rounded there, I think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, so it's not a one size fits all. And, and the other p the component there is what type of organization do I want to work for? Right. <laughs> and, and I think that plays a role into how you build your portfolio. What's going to be attractive to them when, it, when that likelihood that you're going to go there and, and be happy. Right. right. And, and, you know, be able to contribute to the team. So, yeah. And, you know, it's interesting, although that employ that interview that they only wanted to see your GitHub profile, I was a bit disappointed when that happened. But then I later learned more about it and realized, ah, I'm kind of glad that I did yeah. <laughs> that job, you know, after I learned sure. more. Sure. Uh, another one of the cons on the list is really uh, around there's a lot of prep work required. It's very time consuming. Right. Now, it may be people are at different skill levels or different points in their career that the time consuming part may vary. But I think that no matter who you are, there's some prep work re required to go in and make sure you know everything to be ready for that test. And for some people, that might be a year of prep work if they're, right. if they're new. For others, it might be a few days or a week of review to be able to just get up to speed on that, but it's just a real, Whoa, if you're pretty aggressive, Steve. <laughs> well, I, I guess it depends. Like if someone's taken the exams over different versions for the last 15 years, they may just have to touch up on the latest things before going and taking that next exam in the series. Well, so it's funny you say that because that actually happened to me on the 461 exam. I thought it's writing SQL. Like how hard can this be? Like I've been, <laughs> and 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 maybe so. My challenge there was I actually didn't really study. That that was the probably I just thought, eh, you know, I'll go in there and I'll I'll just do it. Yep. And you have to have a seven hundred to pass. And let's just say my score was in the six hundred somewhere, right? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Let me guess. Did the merge statement throw you off on the exam? <laughs> There, there was a group of questions uh, that uh, I guess shall remain nameless that I think threw me off. Yep, yep. So that then I'm like, oh, okay, I got, I got to bone up on that, right? And so I guess I made the backwards mistake of instead of using a, you know, test material to find that out, I used the actual exam to find that out. So, <laughs> yep. yeah, which you know, it's, I mean, that's one way to do it because oftentimes you can get a, a retake that's free or not very expensive, reduced, uh, right? And with that, I mean, not all the prep material is all that it's cracked up to be. And I think that uh, I did some work for a book publisher a few years ago, and that was on the prep work for the DBA series, the 70-462. And one of the criteria that they had for everyone who was contributing on that book and video series was that you could never have taken the 70-462 exam because for people who had actually taken the the exam, they sort of lead into like giving away exact clues of here's how you pass the test. Right. So in order to, to get around the legal hurd hurdle of getting sued in some way, they said, well, you just have to study what Microsoft says is going to be on the exam. And then we write the book around that. I did eventually after doing the work on that book, I did eventually go take the test and it was much easier to take after preparing that book work and that video work for them. But I can see that there were things that are very different in the exam versus what you sort of expect from reading some of the prep material ahead of time. Right. Yeah. That's one of the challenges with the prep material. Like I've used the books right before and then it's like, they just go over everything and you're like, uh, <laughs> and, and they have to go over everything because sure. you don't know exactly what's going to be on the exam. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then the way they get worded and all the other stuff, I guess that's, that's another, that's another hurdle. But yes, they, you know, just, just a sheer amount of material that you have to go over is, uh, is, is a challenge. Yep. Let's see. So the, yep. let's see. So the next one we have is lateral help. Yeah. So really that's sort of 
saying that in most situations, it's n probably not going to help you in your current position, but it may help you if you're jumping somewhere. Right. Or you're looking for something, either a promotion, right? I mean, it, it seems like it's a plus, right? I mean, it's not to say that, that education is not good, right? I get we we're specifically kind of honing in on the on the certifications. You know, obviously listening to this podcast is is a is a is a way to to increase your knowledge and and what you're in your skill set. But yeah, it, it's it seems and I get this is a generalization, but it seems that in our experience it's been I want the certifications for my next job. Not so much for the one I'm currently in. Right, right. So I think that leads to another one on the con list is test anxiety. And I think that there's a lot of, there's a lot of great DBAs and database programmers out there who are just awesome at what they do, but they don't always do well on tests. Right. And the formats of the ch tests are changing. I mean, they're difficult, right? You have to put things in order, right? It's like A through J, you know, uh, it, it's it, knowing some of the syntax. It, it's, it's very, 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 very tricky. Now this, is, now, this actually takes me back to episode 10, the very, very beginning. Uh, uh, Thomas Frank, who runs a blog, uh, for college students. And I actually, we actually chatted with him about some ideas of, you know, prepping for exams and, and kind of dealing with some of that test anxiety. And, uh, and, and so that was, that was kind of interesting. Now you'll have to forgive that episode. That was one of the very, very early ones. So the audio quality is not the greatest there. But, uh, if that's something that you're thinking about, it may be worth, uh, taking a listen to there to episode 10. So another one of the cons as well, well, is that you can just keep taking the test until you pass. <laughs> Meaning as long as you're willing to pay for it. Yeah. Another exam that I've taken that's different from technology here was I'm a volunteer firefighter and EMT. And when I took the EMT exam, that was way more stressful and way more detailed than anything I've done with a, a SQL exam. But the criteria with that was if you don't pass it, you've got to wait a time period before you can retake it. Oh, wow. So I was extremely motivated to make sure I pass it the first time. Whereas with the SQL tests, if you don't pass it, go back the next day or the day after that and take it again. Depends on your budget, how often you can take it, I guess. That's right. And luckily so. There was the, I think it was 463 exam, the data warehouse exam. Oh, man. I took that one at least three times, maybe, maybe four times. So, so good, so good and bad. I mean, so some of that again is just you're trying to balance and, you know, what you need, to, what you need to know with what you have to get to pass the exam. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. And I think that, I mean, and maybe that's an approach you could take is just go take it and find out what you don't know. Sure. Sure. Uh, and then fill in, fill in the cracks. But it also, if you do it that way, where maybe you don't know enough and you just keep retaking it and filling in the cracks, you're really teaching yourself what you need to pass the test, not teaching yourself what you need to be a rock star in that area. For exactly. Instance. Also yeah. true. Also true. Which yep. might be the way to do it on the 463. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless data warehouse is your thing, right? You exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I guess, so to recap our pros, we have measure your skills Foot in the door, exposure, and confidence. Yep. Uh, and our cons were around, it does not necessarily measure your skills. Uh, not the only way to show your skills. There's a lot of prep work. It can be time consuming. It may help you if you're jumping laterally, but not in your current position. Those with test anxiety may have a challenge with it. And you can just keep retaking it until you pass. So there you go, compañeros. What do you think of our list? Uh, of course, we're interested in your feedback. You can drop us a line at uh, on the, the uh, show notes page, which is going to be sqldatapartners.com slash certification. And, you know, just to follow up on all this, I mean, as we've been through the pros and cons and we, we hit the cons as our second half of the list, basically, uh -huh. uh, I think that, I mean, overall, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I just think that there's, there as, as with anything, there's a lot of, lot of positives and negatives with anything, so... Uh, sure, sure, sure. And it, well, I think we changed cons to challenges, right? So true. I guess we're not we're not saying that it's a con to take the to take the exam, right? Again, we're, we've we've both been there. Yep. Um, but just so just challenges. Yep. Both been there. Yep. Um, but just so just challenges. 
yeah, so what do, you, what do you think of that list? We, we'd, we'd be interested in hearing from you and any other comments that you have. Of course, if you have other ideas or things we should be talking about on this podcast, please let us know. You can reach out to us. I am on LinkedIn at Carlos L. Chacon. And I'm on LinkedIn as Steve Stedman. And we'll see you on the sequel trail. 